We're back on TYT Sports and surprisingly we're covering Europa League football because the only way we cover Europa League football is if there is something worth covering in Europa League football. Like, um, like for example, Arsenal fans getting showed up. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, the game was postponed. Uh, it did not get underway until five minutes past nine uh, in the United Kingdom, which is late as you know, because usually games kick off at 7.45. Uh, and it was reported that 20,000 FC Cologne fans uh, descended on the English city, despite only 3,000 having tickets for the game. So, I God, your hair looks great, Francis. I know it does. Really thank does. you very much. So nice. uh, thank you. I am distracted. Does it bounce? No. It does. Yes, yes, it does. Uh, so I have a, I have problems with <laughs> I have problems with Arsenal uh, only assigning 3,000 seats. You. But if you're an Arsenal fan, you're probably like, we're already going to struggle in this game. We're struggling against every opponent. Let's not give them more of a fan base uh, anyway, because it'll make uh, things a little harder. But Regardless, we do need to discuss the fan violence because, right. as you know, I'm a huge um, advocate for sportsmanship, and I, I, I'm not just biased here, but I base traveling support on what I have grown up with and what I've seen. Celtic took 60 to 70 thousand fans to Seville for the UEFA Cup final, as it was called back then, mm -hmm. and were offered the Fair Play Award. It, uh, you can do it. It's not impossible. So fans that go and cause violence, I always want to discuss, but we need to look at the content first, the video content, and we'll see what we thought. We so have some pictures too. The so pictures the first, but there is a video um, that we will want to throw to. Yeah, like with the flares, it always makes it look so Enough. violent. Here we go. Absolutely mental. I mean, uh, it looks like a hell of a time, I'll tell you that. Seriously. Uh, with those fans there, but uh, the problem started to occur when uh, they descended upon the stadium where people were trying to get past barricades and uh, there was just a security issue that um, no one really wants to be a part of, as you know, in the long history of world football. There's been horrendous examples that, yeah, maybe the furthest extreme of when too many people does, uh, get into a, uh, an area that it cannot hold that amount of a capacity. So there was just a little bit of a precaution and therefore it ended up in the game being delayed. Arsenal went on, won the game despite going 1-0 down at some point. In the 10th minute. In the 10th minute, but they combined and won the game. Uh, so <laughs> thoughts, five words or less or yeah. more? Uh, <laughs> Uh, can, we just, can we just zoom in on this for a second? Do you, does anybody else think that this kind of looks like... Uh, got to? I just feel like with the, the turtleneck, you know? <laughs> so you mean I could take a shit, wrap it in tinfoil and sell it to the Queen of Zeri? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if the turtleneck was a little bit wider. I really like the Mugatu, though, because I like that it spells out Mugatu. Mugatu. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Those yeah. are my Vod, thoughts. Vod takeaways from Jason Rubin. Uh, I have to give credit to the Cologne fans, because or Cologne fans, they uh, were singing. If you watch the videos, we can't. I don't think we can use those videos, because I think they come from the stadium itself for... Might be copyrighted, deal with that. They were singing for like 85 minutes before the game. God bless. Non stop. Yeah. Not the fighting. Fighting, terrible. Don't throw flares at people. If anybody saw the recent video, I think it was on Reddit in a, in a maybe it was a Champions League game. They, they fired a, a flare that almost hit the ref from the stand. Yeah, I yeah. remember you it showed me like that. It looked like a bottle rocket or it looked like a missile coming out there. I so. remember you showing me that yesterday. So Fans will be fans. That's what I'm um, I mean, we've seen. A lot of uh, a lot of soccer fans before. I remember in Turkey, I believe it was Galatasaray who had, yeah. who threw flares Fair onto the pitch. Yeah. If I see a group of fans like this parading down uh, Michigan Avenue in Chicago or any other places that I would possibly uh, establish housing, I would run the other way completely as yeah. fast as I possibly can. Uh, as passionate as I love these fans to be. Um, an American by trade, so when it comes to soccer chants, I'd like them to be uh, watered down mm. as much as <laughs> as much as I could possibly uh, be a part of. So, like the Seattle Sounders and their walk, that's my speed. Yeah, it's yeah. speed. That's your no, speed. no, but like it, it's cool. Like, it's cool to see. I just what about you know, the with fan violence? It's it's pathetic. No, I I've always been an advocate for that. I, I think that 
when you look at across the headlines, right? Like the Sun ran a headline like <laughs> German thugs don't care destroy, about destroy. Like I've, obviously, I hate the Sun. Um, hate the Sun. I, uh, which I was enjoy. a very different approach to the way they covered uh, the Euro 2016. Uh, thuggery that was going on between both uh, England fans and Russian fans. So I, I'm not going to say that that there wasn't thugs in amongst this crowd. There definitely was. I mean, there was fighting before the game. I believe inside the stadium, there was people just trying to smash through barricades. That's not acceptable, and they have to be dealt with. Uh, I think that the problem is when you have that amount of people going to a game. There's only 3,000 seats allocated. There's going to be fans trying to get in and around the area to watch. Yep. Uh, I mean, what are you gonna do? You're gonna tell the fans not to travel in that amount of numbers? Like, you no, can't control of that. Not. You just need to, unfortunately, uh, this is a little bit of the milder side of fan violence, but we have seen some really horrendous acts in the past. So you do, unfortunately, need to be strict. You do need to set that example that this is not going to be uh, the go-to acceptable means of carrying yourself when you travel abroad to other places. So here's my question to you. Knowing that fan violence goes on, and you even mentioned Russia, my mind immediately went to shit. When the World Cup goes to Russia, mm -hmm. I cannot imagine. Yeah, it's going to be scary. Seriously, it's going to be very scary. Yet, not even from a World Cup perspective. Let's just talk from the club level perspective. Yeah. What is through your research and also just studying uh, world football? What do you think is the best punishment? For when um, something like this happens to the club and maybe even the fans. So uh, we've had we've this discussion, discussion before. Lot, yeah. So this there's certain things like so tough. when your fans are consistently um, endorsing racist chants or racist behavior, right? So what happens with Dino, uh, Dynamo Kiev consistently? Yep. Yep. Uh, my point of view on that is is like there's only certain things you can do before they learn the lesson, uh, and they didn't. So you have to find the club either by having them play in an empty stadium, right? And that's one of the big, the biggest. I think in most, but does it even understand? have that sort of effect? But it, that it reaches it, the fans. Yeah, I think that if you do that, then if one thing that fans hold dearly to them more than anything is the club. That's what they love so much. So if one fan or a group of fans are, are spoiling it for everyone, then if the club starts to face those repercussions, it's going to get the message through. Now, having fans go to the streets and being a little bit more violent and not being. Uh, not holding the club in the best regard. I don't think the club should be punished at that point. If it consistently happens, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. it's all about a case-by-case -case basis. You need to start figuring out how to punish that team. The team should be coming out with a message straight away saying, we immediately condone any acts of violence, condemn hmm. any acts of violence, sorry, uh, to uh, when it regards to yeah. our fans. Big condone difference. it. Yeah, we <laughs> condone those violence. Uh, so, like, because if it if they feel like they can get away with it, they're going to keep doing it. And right. It might cause a problem. So, uh, like Chelsea fans, I think, Somewhat have got the message that they couldn't, they can't act the way they acted. If if those criminal charges, train. like what happened in train, those the horrible, horrible chance. people, uh, the racists there were actually uh, held accountable. And players came out and voiced their that's what, their outrage to that. That's you need what I was to. It's say. a it's a collective unit. You have to have some sort of understanding that you, if you're going to support a club, uh -huh. and you're going to commit those acts. You can't always hold the club accountable, but the club can hold them accountable for what they're doing and representing that club. If it's in the stadium and it's consistent racist garbage or violence in the stadium, they're gonna have to play in an empty stadium. That's Oof. the way. It, that's a message. It did work. Through. It it's eerie. In the past, it's, it's really, very, it's very eerie. It's very eerie. Uh, the was, that's the one thing I was gonna add was uh, I think the most influential of the ways is, is when the players get involved. Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing when you hear from your club's management or your club's right. executives, so you don't really relate to, but maybe one of your players comes yeah. out and says something. One of your captains comes out and says like, "Hey guys, this is effing ridiculous." Um, and whether they do it via a statement or they do some kind of act during the game. Um, well, yeah, like we've, we've seen, seen that before. Puyol. I was going to say, is that with the Puyol the picked, up, picked up? Yeah, he's like picked up the. He said, stop, uh, don't do the this. Stuff, the objects that will be thrown on, and he's like, what are you doing? Like, you're ruining right. it for everyone. It's like, right. you're absolutely right. It's like when it's like when the principal tells you that you're not going to do something, you're like, I'm going to say that guy. Dare, but when they're really cool, right. when the really cool jock, who's the coolest guy in school, comes up and goes, come on, fellas. Let's not do that. You're right. like, all right, cool. What cool? I get you. You went to school with cool jocks. Jocks. Jocks usually not cool. Don't go hand in hand. Usually it's <laughs> dickhead jocks. All right, well, when the cool, right. kid, the cool right. kid in school says it, then you're just going to go with what the cool kid says. Who's the coolest kid in your but, school, Francis? I was not. And it, you, as much as I am very egotistical and <laughs> like to give myself a lot of praise, I was I'm, not. I'm glad you admit I never, to it. I never, it's very unmugatu. I never <laughs> blossomed. I never blossomed into this daffodil you see in front of you. This until daff I, daffodil. This daffodil. Until I was in my late... All I heard was Daffy Duck. <laughs> After my brief spell Got as a, a soccer player, player. I, I, I uh -huh. started to come into my own and put on a little bit of beef because I was like 145, 150 pounds in Scotland. So, uh, How many stones is that? 
That's very light. That's Four like eight stone. and a half, nine stone. Nine stone. Uh, the Edwin laugh chart's at one, by the way. We got one. Yeah, we got to keep Edwin laughing. When you know it's a good joke when Edwin laughs. One. So far. <laughs> Sweet. There you go. Two. <laughs> That's a good joke.